Good morning, folks. We've got a big cosmology study, geomagnetic reversal news. We'll take a peek at geophysical events and a tool to combat censorship while starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun was mostly quiet, both there and back here as the solar wind is stabilizing along with geomagnetic conditions. Eruptive behavior on the sun is low, minor little flares only from the tiny active regions on the north. The big, terrible story weather-wise was in the United States as the storm system dropped numerous tornadoes last night, damage and death totals rose through the evening, and we wish them the best. This is the ozone wavelength with the lightning overlay from GOES. Top quake of the last day struck the eastern Caribbean. Not many of those at this magnitude here and somewhat worrisome as a potential foreshock to something bigger. Let's go back in time to Yale's discovery that there are no islands in space. These plasma electric sheets connect the galaxies and halos and clusters across the cosmic web and in between. The interactions are not limited to these sheets, but also to the helical spiraling vortex currents that feed the galaxies from the cosmic web. That was Keck and NASA. And today, we find more of the missing baryons and once again, where and how we find them means we need to account for more than just their gravity, but also their large-scale electromagnetic interactions as part of a larger system. After last month's finding of plasma extending to much greater distances, potentially replacing dark matter halos, we can say that it's true. There really are no islands in space. Everything is connected. Taking a moment here to show Adrian from Suspect Sky. Many of you know he is working on a multi-platform anti-censorship hydra that will make it easier for me and many other people taking shadow bans, throttling, and censorship to fight back with a broad sword. We need all the tools we can get here in 2021. Our community doesn't get a lot of wins these days, and they are so close on Kickstarter here. Link is below. Couple geomagnetic studies here. First, we have a confirmation of the 2017 acceleration of the field loss and shifting over the Pacific sector. This one definitively needed a second confirmation, and now we've got it, even without them giving a new percentage down in the field. This next one we're putting in the circle back to that file. An unnamed geomagnetic event at 430,000 years ago and no evidence of the last cron reversal of the planet 700,000 years ago, despite the alleged 800,000 year long data coring. It's hard to say if this is just more of the isotope dating fiasco that was a strong excursion 430,000 years ago or if indeed we did get a full cron reversal more recently than 700,000 years ago. Maybe 430,000 years ago is the real age of the last cron reversal, but either way, every time they core, they have to circle back to questions on previous conclusions. Folks, it's always good to get a peek back into the Lake Mungo magnetic event, Heinrich event 2 in the last glacial maximum, about 24,000 years ago. Even though it was the glacial maximum of the last 100,000 years, numerous megafauna disappeared, and humans were strongly restricted by the climate, it is actually one of the less harsh 12,000 year cycle events of the last 100,000 years. Learning about that period is also invaluable to understand what Earth will be like after the next event. And finally, coming to a study that sterilizes the doubt from the total planetary conductivity system we've been discussing, including the electromagnetic interaction of the core and the mantle, explaining glitches in the length of a day, relating to secular variation, everything from drift to excursions and full cron magnetic reversals. So as this relates to the ongoing geomagnetic excursion, let's contemplate that core mantle electromagnetic coupling in the Earth's rotation or length of day. This is where it helps to forget this old garbage view of Earth's interior and really remember the LLSVPs, the skeleton of the Earth, the extra dense and conductive pathways of the system, combined with the electromagnetic forcing of Earth's rotation glitches, confirmed today and which we've seen numerous times in the journals, this is why they find the most anomalous Earth rotation glitches with geomagnetic jerks and solar storms. And this is why when the solar micronova creates the greatest solar storm, at the same time as inducing to the core and creating its own geomagnetic jerk, the jerk to the Earth's rotation will be a biblical event as the micronova dust spends the next three days or so blocking out the sun. Our book on this topic is available at otf.cells.com, the next end of the world. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. 
right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.